Well, welcome to our panel tonight. Different composition. Gareth Ward, the Liberal Minister in the Berejiklian government, can't be with us. So we welcome appropriately Damien Tudhope. I say appropriately because he's the New South Wales Minister for Finance and Small Business, and both of them are on the ropes. Chris Minns, of course, is the young bull in the Labor Party, many of whom say he should be the leader, and he certainly performed like one on this panel. So let's go. Look, thank you both. Chris, can I go to you first? I live in Macquarie Street, Sydney, and I watch with an acute sense, I mean this, of depression. A small, and I don't get depressed, but small businesses everywhere smashed. You can't get a taxi in Macquarie Street. There's no reason for a taxi to be there. The Aria restaurant struggles on manfully and brilliantly. And I put a graph up last night of Sweden. And this is proof we have unnecessarily smashed small business. And before we say that the fatality rate is higher, I mean, have we gone about this the right way, Chris, where Sweden actually looked after the elderly, looked after the vulnerable, practised appropriate hygiene and then said to the others, get on with your life, no lockdowns, no nothing. And there they are now, business is thriving, business is going and here we are crushed. Was there another way to do this, Chris? Well, thanks, Alan. It's, it's good to hear Ari is doing well. Maybe they're going to have to do McDonald's-style drive through soon to keep the, the cash registers going over. Look, I think I've heard you on the program the last couple of nights talk about Sweden and Taiwan as uh, good examples of alternative COVID theory. Um, Sweden in particular is probably on better ground when it comes to Taiwan rather than Sweden, in my view. It looks like they had peak mortality mm. and death rates around April. April, yep. And it looks like the graph there. there was a self-isolation for many residents because yep. their economy has certainly been damaged. They've got, a, I think, a 22% reduction in their economic output. Their GDP is down by 8%. Unemployment is 10%. There's even a GPS tracker which measures iPhone movements that says that foot traffic's down uh, 40%. So their economy has been hit at similar levels to the neighbouring countries. Um, but you're right, their mortality rate has massively dropped in the last few months. Uh, look, if the exercise was no social restrictions in order to keep the economy ticking over, it hasn't worked as far as Sweden's concerned. Taiwan, I suspect, will be the model uh, when we get through this pandemic uh, for how countries got through this in the best way. Well, now, to you, Damien, and welcome to the program. But, Thank you, Alan. I mean, you're in charge of small business. I mean, you can't run away from this. I mean, it is absolutely smashed. And we're destroying livelihoods, we're destroying businesses... And psychologically, socially and emotionally, kids are coming home into families where dad doesn't know where his next quit is going to come from, doesn't know whether the business is going to survive. Could I just make a point to you? I mean, yep. infrastructure may be the way out here. We need housing. Housing yep. is jobs. Housing has multipliers. Every house that's built, you have to put curtains and a dining room table and carpets and so on. Why not take, in New South Wales, for example, the best and proven developers and declare their projects state significant and tell them to get on with this and omit all the green rubbish. Yeah, well, I don't know. and thanks for having me on the program and, um, and uh, good evening to Chris. Um, I, I accept that point that there is a necessity for infrastructure as the panacea for the way that we recover. And, in fact, the, uh, the, re the road to recovery is built on identifying infrastructure and, in fact, uh, a component of that is getting rid of the red tape, the green tape... Yeah, I know. ..and having a but planning you're the scheme. Boss. You're the boss. All you've got to do is to go into the parliament and pass a bill... And, and uh, get the Labor Party to support you and say to these people, get on with your job. And, in is, fact, is... I think we've already done that. If you look at what we've done in relation to the Aerotropolis, we have overridden the planning schemes and introduced new state environmental planning policies which do, in fact, take 190-odd days out of the planning system. But, Damien, we... I could... Damien, sorry to interrupt you. I Correct. could name you... Yep. I could name you 15 projects that can't get the go-ahead. All they want to do is build houses, give people jobs, pay tax, payroll tax and all the rest of it, and they can't get the go-ahead. Gladys says, oh, we're open for business. Ask business whether they think we're open for business. Well, I don't walk away from the fact, though, that there is a, a requirement that, in fact, all um, uh, projects need some sort of level of approval. Now, I, I accept what you say is that there are sometimes, and, and, it, and we highlighted it in relation to the bushfire, where we, uh, local government was, in fact, requiring uh, homeowners in bushfire-affected properties to... when They yeah, put in uh, an application to yeah, rebuild their homes. Everyone knows that, Damien. What we don't know is whether you're all talk or all hat and no cattle, <laughs> as they say. When are these 
prestigious, responsible, reliable developers going to be told we're in a desperate situation, get on with the job. Chris, your views on that? Yeah, well, they're not, they get approval when the yeah. pandemic hits. As soon as the economic recession kicks in, the government goes, oh, we'll give, them, we'll give them approval that the building can start immediately. There's one problem. There's no capital in the marketplace to get the project up and running. Most of these projects should have been approved years Absolutely. ago when they were ready to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, where, do, and where was Chris then? And where was Chris then? Get rid of quickly, quickly, Alan. UK... Germany cutting taxes. That's the way to get this economy going when you've got a liquidity crisis and you've got a problem with internal demand. Cut taxes. No well, more talk of increasing okay. the GST. Let, let no just... more talk of land taxes. Right. Let me just change the direction. Damien, to you, the ACT Justice Minister and the Greens leader Shane Rattenbury is advocating that children as young as 16 should be able to apply to the government to change the record of their biological sex on their birth certificates. No proof or parental consent required. They argue the need for parental consent is seen as an obstacle to have their lived gender legally recognised. Damien. Well, uh, uh, there's just a norm. This, this is nuts. This sort of stuff, uh, every time you hear it, where you try and get rid of the rights of parents is just, quite frankly, nuts. These are, are kids who don't have a right to drink. They don't have a right, in many respects, uh, to smoke. They don't have a right uh, to vote. Uh, but we want to be able to allow them to change their birth certificate to say that they are not the sex uh, which is, the, is biologically recorded on, the, on a birth certificate. Well, Quite frankly, that is nutty. There is a, an election in the ACT in uh, six to eight weeks. There's a, uh, uh, we've got to get rid of the nutters. Well, Chris, let me come to you. I do understand, and I'm sure you do too, that a minority of people face real difficulties being one person but feeling that they are another. But should a child be able to make an application without parental consent? No, the parental consent needs to stay in place. Um, we, we need to respect the fact that some parents might have legitimate reasons not to grant approval yeah, to that yeah. change. And that, those considerations need to be taken into, into account as far as the law is concerned. There are good reasons that parental responsibility goes up to the age of 18. And yeah. primarily, particularly yeah. for boys, the brain is not fully developed no, at the right. age of 16 mm. and they require guidance and help when good making difficult decisions. Good, responsible comment. Can I just ask you both about democracy? Has democracy gone out the window? There are all sorts of freedoms being taken away. No parliamentary debate, no mandate, no endorsement by the electorate. Chris... How are we different from North Korea? Well, we're not a hereditary dictatorship, but, but uh, we, in particularly in New South Wales, Alan, we've got a five-week break in parliamentary democracy right now. And, and, look, you've made the point repeatedly over the last few months that there are severe restrictions on people's civil liberties Absolutely. that are taking place at the moment. The idea that you would suspend parliamentary democracy so that the executive can be questioned is ridiculous. Absolutely. We just had a five-week break Absolutely. and now going into another well, five-week break. It's not consistent good on with you. Well, now, the Damien, norms and politics that we need. Damien, let me ask you. Section 92 is blindingly specific in providing the absolute free movement of people within the Commonwealth. Yep. Scott Morrison says the borders should not be closed. Damien, if a coalition government isn't prepared to fight for freedom of interstate trade and defend the Constitution, what will they fight for? Well, I, I happen to agree with you. I think this was an opportunity of at least testing the decisions to close a border. Um, if, in fact, uh, you give free reign to states to be able to just close the border, where does it end? Right. This was an opportunity to be able to say, we need to know where... The, the, the limits are, and there may be limit, there may be opportunities to close a border in circumstances where there is a well, that should be tested in the threat, courts. But we should have, we should have a circumstance where that is tested to say where that does that be... where does that rise? And, and what... I worry about this, Alan. I, and we have a circumstance in Queensland at the moment where they close the border, and there's no ostensible reason to do so, no. well, and they are putting Queensland they don't ahead the... of Australia. But Damien, they don't have the power to close the border. Well, the Constitution, Section 92, denies that. If they want it, go to court. But no-one... Clive Palmer's in court doing this and Scott Morrison's walked away from it. Boys, yeah. we have to go. Good to talk to you, Chris. Damien, thank you for joining us. Lovely to be with you. Thank you for your input. Good there on. we are.